is a 2004 Honda Civic Si, and it's, well, unusual. Honda didn't offer a hatchback version of this Civic here in the United States, except for the High Performance Si. It was only sold here in small numbers for a few years, and it's largely forgotten. But today, I'm going to review this Civic Si, and we're going to remember. Before I get started, big news, this Civic Si is currently for sale, being auctioned live on Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website. This Civic Si is special. It was with its original owner for 14 years. It's been babied with just 37,000 miles, and it has the rare Honda Factory Performance Package. So once you've finished watching this video, click the link in the description to head over to the live auction for this Civic Si on cars and bids, and you can bid on it and buy it with no reserve, only on cars and bids. So let's talk Civic Si. This is called the EP3 in the Honda world, and like I said, it was the only Civic hatchback sold in North America from this generation. They brought over a hatchback body style just to make it cool. Now, these all had a 160 horsepower four cylinder, a five speed manual transmission only, and some rather interesting quirks. And today, I'll show you. First, I'll take you on a thorough tour of the Civic Si and show you its interesting quirks and features, then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of this Civic hatchback, the EP3, as Honda enthusiasts know it, with a little overview. Now, like I said, the Civic hatchback of this generation was never sold here in North America. We only got this Civic as a sedan or as a coupe, but they decided to bring over the hatchback solely as the high-performance SI model. Now, other markets did get this Civic in hatchback form as a non-performance model, just a regular old Civic, and there was even a four-door version of this Civic hatchback body style that was sold in other markets. But in the States, they only brought over the High Performance Si as a hatchback. Now, another interesting thing about this car's production and global reach is where it was built. Honda was hoping that this version of the Civic, and specifically the Civic hatchback, would give them more success in Europe. So they built Civic hatchback models at their factory in the United Kingdom, and that includes this car. So here's a Japanese car that I'm driving around in America, but it was built in the UK. So kind of an odd supply chain situation, but that was true of all EP3 Civic Si hatchback models sold here in North America. They were built in Great Britain. But anyway, next up we move under the hood and all of these EP3 Civic Si models had the same powertrain, which was a two liter four cylinder that made 160 horsepower and it was mated only to a five speed manual transmission. You couldn't get an automatic in this Civic Si. Now, this was the same powertrain in the base level Acura RSX, and 160 horsepower might not seem like all that much, but this car weighed only around 2,750 pounds, which is really small, especially by today's standards. Now, even then, 160 horsepower wasn't a huge number. Zero to 60 for this car was in the low to mid seven second range, but the Civic Si has never really been about all out power or straight line speed, and that's even true today. Plus, back in the early to mid 2000s, 160 horsepower was pretty competitive. The Ford SVT Focus had 170 horsepower and the Hyundai Tiburon GT had 172. Also comparably priced was a Mini Cooper, but for the money this car cost, you could only get a base model Mini Cooper with 115 horsepower, so this was way above that. The real bargain of this segment at the time was the Dodge Neon SRT4. That started around the same price as a Civic Si, but it had 230 horsepower. It was a big muscle car, but then you were buying a Chrysler product and frankly a Dodge Neon. I love that car, but <laughs> quality might not have quite been the same. So speaking of pricing, let's discuss what this car cost. Back in 2004, the sticker price was around $20,000 for a brand new Honda Civic Si, which feels like a total bargain by modern standards. But this particular Civic Si was more expensive than that because it has the optional dealer installed Honda factory performance package, which was incredibly rare. I've only seen it a couple times on these Civic Si models, and this particular car has it. And it included quite a few upgrades 
upgrades to distinguish it from a standard Civic Si. The most obvious is the wheels. If you know these cars, you know these weren't the regular wheels, but in fact they were part of that Honda factory performance package. Different design and a little larger 17s on this car as opposed to the standard 16s on the Civic Si. Other upgrades primarily included a body kit, which you can see all around the car. Sort of lower rocker panels have this cool body kit. You can see above the wheel arches, you have this little strip line molding going around, which was also part of the kit. You also had a rear spoiler, as you can see here, directly above the rear window, and a rear under spoiler. That's what Honda called it. I guess kind of a diffuser-like thing, also around back below the bumper. And you had a front spoiler as well as part of the body kit tacked on the front bumper to give the car a sportier appearance. And the Honda factory performance package went further than that. It claims that it included sport suspension, although I'm not exactly sure what they changed. Certainly the car is a little bit lowered with this package, which definitely made it sportier. And you have carbon fiber trim in the interior. You can see the center control stack trimmed in carbon fiber and same deal with the climate vents over on the driver's side and over on the passenger side, carbon fiber trim. So a lot of cosmetic upgrades if you got the Honda factory performance package like this car has. And what did it all cost? Well, the original selling dealer had it listed as an $11,000 option, meaning it added 50% to the price of this car. 20 grand sticker plus 11 grand for this package. Imagine you're buying a $50,000 new car today and there's an optional cosmetic performance package that adds 25 grand. It sounds ridiculous, but that's what they were charging. However, that is not what they got. The original bill of sale shows that the actual purchase price was around $25,000, which made this option package maybe around four to $5,000 extra, which seems about right and in line with what I was reading they were charging back at the time. Now, also worth pointing out with this Honda factory performance package, it included some badges to let people know that this Civic Si was special. You can see one on the rear hatch, HFP, to remind everyone, and you also had one in the interior, so you were reminded as you drove along about your special additional package. Also worth pointing out that when this car was new, this package also included graphics along the entire side of the car, sort of silver contrast color lines that made the car look cool, as you can see in this image. Unfortunately, these graphics were at some point removed. Maybe they faded or started peeling or something, but when the car was sold new, it had those graphics as part of this package to make it even sportier looking. And we know this because the original owner of this car kept it for 14 years and saved everything in this binder, as you can see, including the original window sticker, as I showed you, all the original paperwork, insurance, servicing, basically everything, and that original picture of the car with its original graphics. Now, the current owner of this car bought it about four years ago from the original owner, and he says that it was a proverbial little old lady who bought this car when she was in her 70s and kept it until she was in her mid to late 80s and thus didn't really drive it all that much, obviously never modified it, and that helps to explain the condition of the car today. I also absolutely love the fact that if you look closely on the original window sticker, you can see that handwritten there are the words double cam more horsepower. And I can just imagine the old lady buying this car at the Honda dealership was asking the salesperson, now what did you say it was again? And then she wrote it down so she could go home and tell her grandson why this particular car <laughs> was more exciting than a standard Civic. It's just funny to see that on the original window sticker. But anyway, next up we move inside the EP3 SI hatch where there are a few interesting quirks, starting with the seats, which don't really match the interior. You got a black car, you got a black interior for the most part, but the seats are this sort of charcoal gray Alcantara with red stitching, and then they're almost greenish looking inserts in the center, this sort of bumpy cloth insert, which is kind of odd. It's almost like they made these seats completely separate from the rest of the car, which is probably what they did. Like I said, these Civic hatchbacks were sold as normal models in other markets, and they probably thought to make it a performance car, let's just stick in some sport seats. So they don't really go with the interior, but they are sporty and cool. Now, the main interesting interior quirk in this car was unquestionably the gear lever, which is placed on the center control stack. As you can see, below the radio, below the climate controls, you have your gear lever. It comes out from the center console, and then it's sort of bent up and towards the driver. Now, interestingly, despite this placement, it actually doesn't really feel any different. It's about the same distance from the steering wheel as a normal gear lever. It drives and operates fairly consistently to what a regular manual gear lever is, but when 
you look at it, especially at first, you're thinking, why did they stick the gear lever in the center console? That's what they did. And frankly, the why is probably, if they had stuck it in the middle between the seats, like in most cars, it would have been pretty low down there, which would have been a long travel for you to go to shift gears when your hand is on the steering wheel. So they brought it a little bit closer up, and that was the result. Definitely interesting for this car. But anyway, next up, other than those quirky items, not too much in here to remind you that you're in the special Civic Si. The only badging in here is the floor mats. You can see, say Civic Si, which is cool, and the gauge cluster, white-faced gauges with sort of an italicized performancy font that says Si at the bottom, a little bit sportier than you might get in a standard Civic. Otherwise, this interior was basically general Civic in here, which again is still true of Civic Si models to this day. Honda's goal is not to make a very expensive, high-performance muscle car, but rather sort of an affordable performance car. And one of the ways they do that is keeping costs down by not going too crazy with Alcantara and stitching and trim everywhere. And so it's pretty basic Civic in here. A couple of interesting quirks about this interior in general. For one, the storage situation. There's some interesting pockets. For one, above the glove box, but below the airbag on the passenger side of the dashboard, you have this little storage compartment here open, but you can stick stuff there if you want. And strangely, you have the same thing over on the driver's side below the climate vent, a tiny little additional storage pocket here. Now, also in that vicinity, directly above that little cubby, you have a panel that says pull, which is interesting. So you pull it and it comes out and reveals a cup holder. This is a special driver side cup holder that the passenger can't use. It does directly block your driver side climate vent, but it is still a nice private cup holder to have, which is unusual to see in a car like this. So some interesting storage solutions in this interior. But anyway, next up we move on to the back seats. Yes, this car had back seats. It was a practical high performance hatchback and getting in is fairly simple. You just fold the front seat forward like in most cars and then you climb inside. Now you'll discover that the back seat isn't exactly huge, although it's bigger than I was expecting it would be. You have some decent passenger room back here, but not massive space. Still, it would be fine for children or even adults on kind of shorter trips in a little bit of discomfort. Now, the back seat isn't quite as cool as the front seat. You don't have the Alcantara trim or the red stitching, although you do have the sort of greenish bumpy cloth in the seat center, which is kind of a distinguishing touch. But other than that, you have no frills in this back seat. It is very basic and very, very simple. Honda figured most people wouldn't be using these back seats except occasionally, and so they didn't really go all out making them cool. You do have only one nice touch that I wasn't expecting back here, which is a cup holder in the center, but just one single cup holder and that's it, nothing else. Otherwise, you just sat here quietly in the back seat while the driver did the driving until you reached your destination. And next up, we'll move around back to the Civic Si, where we'll talk about the cargo area. To access it, you open up the tailgate and then cargo area. As you can see, pretty standard, nothing unusual or special or weird or different back here, kind of like the back seats. Honestly, Hondas from this era gave you exactly what you expected and nothing crazy or weird or daring, which frankly is why a lot of people liked Hondas from this era. They were just simple, basic, usable, and reliable, and this car is that. Now, as for the cargo area, you can see reasonably large for a compact hatchback. And of course, you can put the seats down if you want even more space, which adds to the practicality. Making this Civic Si into a hatchback was kind of a big deal because the prior model had been only offered as a coupe, even though previous Civic Si's were also hatchbacks. So Honda had done hatchbacks in the past and then gone coupe, and people thought the Si would be a coupe going forward, and then they brought back the hatchback, which excited a lot of Honda enthusiasts. And as you can see, it was reasonably practical back here. Now, the other interesting item worth noting back here is the taillights, which are in the famous Alteza style. This was something pioneered by Toyota in the late 90s, and it caught on with enthusiasts and kind of the tuner crowd in that era and in the early 2000s. And basically what this meant was your taillight was clear, except for the parts that needed to be colored, like the red brake light and the orange turn signal. Otherwise, it was clear. These were called Alteza taillights, and I can assure you they were very cool back in the early to mid 2000s, especially from the factory, an automaker doing Alteza's showed that they really understood their market. And so those are the quirks and features of the Honda Civic Si hatchback. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives.
All right, driving the EP3 Civic Hatch. I have driven these before, and I actually like this car quite a bit for a few reasons. Number one, Honda listened to its market demand. People were like, no, we don't want a Civic Si Coupe. We want it to be a hatch like it always was. And so they said, fine, we're gonna bring the hatch back just for the Si. Like they really listened to people. Unfortunately, it was then kind of a flop. <laughs> it didn't do all that well. And we haven't had a Civic Si hatchback, I don't think since then. The next one was a coupe and then they had a sedan. And I think this was the last Civic Si hatch. Honda listened to us and then they were, <laughs> they were very disappointed. But few cool things about this car. For one thing, performance. So performance was never incredible in terms of acceleration. This car is not particularly fast, it never was. Even at the time, it was criticized for being a little bit slow. Um, and at the time, I was reading reviews, it was criticized for being a little bit heavy, which then I see this weighs in at 2,750 pounds. And I'm like, oh, that's not heavy. But at the time it was, especially with 160 horsepower and zero to 60, people were getting in the mid, low mid sevens, which isn't really all that fast. Even then it wasn't really all that fast. But the cool thing about this car was never really the like top speed capability. That wasn't like the thing about it. Instead, it was kind of the toss Ability. This car was a great little steerer and it was a fun little car that you could throw around and I always liked that about this car. Steering was always pretty connected and in this car it feels very good. It's, it's quite precise, especially for a 20 year old car. And I don't say that because, oh, usually their bushings are, are worn or whatever. I say that because people just didn't have the same standards 20 years ago for a performance car. And so steering in performance cars wasn't always that great, but in this car, it always was. It's nice, it's connected and it feels good. And it it feels sporty and spry and powerful. Even going around a corner was pretty good. Now this car did have a little bit of an issue because it's kind of tall. And so there was a little bit more body roll than you might like. And frankly, a little bit more understeer than you might like, but it's generally pretty good. And it was lively. Even with the understeer, you were kind of tossing it around and really feeling everything through the steering wheel, which is fun. Not all cars are like that, especially modern cars, but in this one, you were really in control. It was a little car and you could throw it around and have fun with it. And I think that was a cool thing about it. Now, another cool thing about this car, frankly, is the fact that they just didn't make all that many. Um, it was pretty common to find a Civic from this era. This was probably the heyday of the Civic, some of its best sales, but the SIs were rare. They made them, I think, from 02 to 05. You wanted the later ones. There were a few upgrades, I think, in 04, uh, and this is in 04. And they were just not common cars. Not only did you get your own special dedicated SI body style, but you got like an actual rare vehicle, which is cool. And old Hondas are starting to become more valuable and more desired now. And I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up having an effect on the values of these also, um, given that they were just not all that common. They were all manual transmission. And it's kind of like an old school Honda ethos. One of the thing I like about this car, liked then still like, is the uh, gear shift lever situation. I like the fact that it's mounted in the center control stag, but actually that's not really what I'm referring to. And frankly, you kind of forget that after driving the car for just a couple minutes. The thing I like about it is the way it feels. It's so smooth going into gear. It's easy. It's quick to shift. It's exactly what you'd expect. And the same deal with the clutch. These are great cars to learn. Same deal with the clutch. Honda is known for making good manual transmissions like this. Uh, and this car was no exception. Just like the S2000, good clutch shift action makes you really feel like you're in control. And there's no like notchiness or weird kick to the clutch like a lot of cars have. It's just excellent. Overall, I think this car is cool. And more importantly, I think it's special. Like I said, rare, only made for a few years, manual only, naturally aspirated, kind of the old school of it all. And it's just sort of neat to have that experience. These old Hondas are becoming more desirable and with good reason. The truth is none of these cars are fast, including the S2000, including the Integra Type R, but nostalgia is a big play. And everybody kind of remembers, you know, shifting your own gears, driving a basic, simple Honda that was a performance hatchback at the time. And that's this. And I think that this car is cool. It's a, it's a fun era in Honda's history. And frankly, to me, it's almost more desirable than some of the other SI models because it had this dedicated body style. It was a little bit more special and a little bit more distinctive than other Civic SIs. And so that's the 2004 Honda Civic SI hatchback. This is an unusual vehicle, but it's also cool. A fun, hot hatchback. You're unlikely to find too many on the road, but you can find this one on cars and bids. Anyway, now it's time to give the Civic Si a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 45 out of 100, which places the EP3 Civic Si here against some relevant cars. This is a cool hot hatchback, although it's more warm than smoking hot, but it's still lively and fun to drive with some neat added practicality compared to sports cars like the Toyota MR2 Spider. The EP3 Civic Si is an interesting car, and this particular example was especially nice to check out.